welcome to the Wallace Collection, Jessie. Um, and we're in this amazing room. I don't know what it's called, but it's full of Marie Antoinette's furniture. And I nearly got into amazing. trouble the minute I got here <laughs> by putting your book on a on a one of these fabulous tables that's not allowed to have anything Very on it. Naughty. So I nearly got us thrown out before we started. <laughs> Everybody who's watching will know you from your mega enormous stratospheric <laughs> bestseller, the miniaturist. Um, so. Before we, we're here to talk about The Muse, which is your second novel, but the first yeah. novel, your first novel, The Miniaturist, but I'm going to take you back to that crazy time mm -hmm. first, which may not be a crazy time you want to go back to, but we, <laughs> so we won't stay there too long. Okay. Do you feel like now, does it feel like a bit of a weird dream? Or? It does sometimes feel, elements of it do feel very unreal. Um, I think it's partly because I was trying to differentiate between me as the writer and then the book itself and the phenomenon of the book and where I was to, to, you know, supposed to position myself. Um, but so much of it was just so you know, unexpected and um, over the top and unusual that it was quite hard to assimilate. So yeah, it remains quite unreal. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to dwell on it, but at the beginning of the year, you wrote an, that absolutely amazing oh, essay yeah. on your blog. Um, about creativity and anxiety, mm. which was about the experience of of sudden success yeah. and how how that was. Um, what was it that made you? What made you do that? Yeah, nine thousand words. Of <laughs> I know it's soul I printed it. it out, eleven pages. Oh my god! On, in twelve point. You know, it took me a really long time to write that. That took me about six or seven months. And I kept trying to write it. I knew I had to write something, but I couldn't because I was still in the sort of gloom and the mist and the fog and the depression and it was really hard and actually classically it was only after it was kind of um, had diminished that I could analyse it and look at it. I felt that I, I wanted to, to sort of be public about it partly because I don't think there should be so much stigma around anxiety mm. and depression and the fluctuating mental health states we all will experience in our lives. Um, but also I just was feeling like I was cracking up under the public and the private truths Mm. And I needed to kind of close that gap a bit more. And I knew, you know, I was going forward, going to be talking about the muse in my new book and being under scrutiny and talking at length. And I needed, I just needed to sort of clear the air. Um, and I wanted to do it earlier rather than around now. So yeah. it didn't look like a kind of another... A publicity stunt Exactly, it, another yeah. thing of using me and my life and my heart and my soul to sell a book. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to talk about it as a separate thing. So tell us a bit, like you said about the Spanish and London section, tell us a bit about the story of the news. So there are two time periods. Uh, it's pre-Civil War in Spain, so January 36, and London in 1967. And it sort of, it tells the story of these two women in these two time periods. Olive Schloss, who's a young, aspiring painter, secretly painting. Her father's an art dealer, he doesn't know she paints. And Adele Bastian, who's from Trinidad, lived in London for five years, come to try and make it as a writer and finds herself up against all kinds of um, adversities. And it's about this long lost masterpiece called Rafina and the Lion, which is a painting that links these two girls together. And it's a book about identity, self-creation, friendship, art, first love, and, uh, and, and yeah, female, female, I don't know, female bonds as well. I think um, it really struck me when I read The Miniaturist that um, uh, the, the character was really... Uh, I really I really hate strong female characters. I know, isn't really it hate the worst You'd never say ever. strong male character, no. would you? No, but I, I had I this yesterday, actually. A yeah. kind of a, a quiet, <laughs> firm feminism ran through Nella yeah. in The Miniaturist. And that is really apparent, I would say, actually in all the female characters. In, in the muse, mm. but particularly in Adele, yeah. um, and not so quiet, but very firm in Olive. Mm, mm. Um, is that intentional, or is that just you? I think it's just me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. This whole idea of sort of strong female, like for me, most nearly all women are by default strong, uh, or, or, or you know, this quality is always. I know it's a kind of catch-all adjective, but. I think, um, for me, it's just natural that these women and girls are going to be striving and um, forward-thinking and brave and confrontational and argumentative and challenging. Um, as an author, as a writer, it's more exciting to write characters like that rather than and passive. And as a reader, of course. So, um, 
But no, it's never, it's never deliberate. It's just how they come out. <laughs> yeah. Adele is, um, has, is Trinidadian yeah. and has come to London um, five years earlier. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, did you think twice about writing a woman of colour? Uh, well, this is to give you practice for when a difficult person asks you Yeah, this yeah, question, yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I know it's coming. Um, yes, I did. I did in the sense that I thought, I mean, it was a kind of like moral argument in my head. Do I have a right in a way? Is this cultural appropriation? But I also thought, well, she's part of London in the 1960s. It's an absolutely massive part of this city and this country's history now, but not just in the 20th century, in the 19th, 18th, 17th century. That's a long line that goes back, mm -hmm. right back to slavery, right back to colonialism. And I think Britain has kind of dealt with that slightly with India, but maybe less so with the West Indian ex-colonies. And I think the gen of it started for me with the miniaturist and the sugar trade and like my awareness growing. But also I knew that Adele the prism that Adele views the world is, also, is her Trinidadian heritage, but it's also that she's a woman too. So I was trying to make sure she had, uh, you know, love adventures and she had ambitions and she, it wasn't just about that she was a black woman because for her it wasn't that either. You know, she came from a very hierarchical society dictated by Englishness and whiteness and then she comes mm. to London, she's just black. It's just this blanket adjective. And I found that really fascinating. The bit about sending her right, your, her having to send your writing yeah. to London for yeah. it to be broadcast back at you by the yeah. World Service yeah. to be legitimised. Yeah, is yeah, really yeah. Fascinating. So I guess from a historical viewpoint, I found it very interesting. From a more creative viewpoint, I, I, I did view it as a challenge, but I also didn't want to kind of panic about it. And and yeah, I just I just thought well. I think Adele, Adele is Adele, Adele is from Trinidad, you know, and it was just how it, it was quite organic. But I did, you know, I was nervous about when I used the girls when she talks to her best friend Cynthia and they're talking in p Patois. Yeah. I had a contact at the University of the West Indies in Trini, who is probably about the age Adele would be now, and she went through it all uh, I was and helped me. Was, I was going to ask you yeah. that. Yeah, because I, yeah, I'm clearly not, <laughs> yeah. clearly not from Trinidad. Um, so... But yeah, I mean, it would just be interesting. It'd just be interesting to see how it's received. Um, yeah, because I'm obviously white and I've written that. But, you know, I think another argument people will say, well, if a writer can't inhabit mm. another... But I, I think that's a little basic. I think there are, there are fine-tuned things at play. Um, and lastly, uh, what's next? Um, well, I've got a few kind of nebulous ideas in my mind, um, but I want to sort of marinate them for a bit because it has felt very uh, intense kind of like a concertina three or four years of, of creativity and I just quite like to recharge a little so by the end of October I'll have done quite a lot of publicity and, and festivals and literary events for the muse and and then we'll see hopefully there'll be some announcements but I, I I'm sort of taking it easy okay, brilliant thank you Jessie thank you thank you so much <laughs>